Good morning, Councillor Brian. Nice to see you. Can you all choose your language of choice for Councillor Brian? Councillor Julie, welcome, and Councillor Sam. Hello. Hi, Jane. Good morning. We're recording now, Jane. Okay, thank you, Berwin. Good morning to you all. Bonjour. Um, I'd like to, on behalf of the members, congratulate the new uh, leader, which is Councillor Sam Milland, for being elected uh, in the Senate. And I'm sure you'd all like me to. Uh, congratulations. Um, My name is Councillor Austin Roberts, and I am the chair of the Finance and Resources Overview and Scrutiny Committee. I can confirm that the committee officer has tested the sound before starting the meeting, so I take that everyone can hear me. Um, excuse me, Councillor Austin, the translation is very, very low. Can I ask that translator too comes in, please? Okay, translator. To here. Thank you. Now? Is that better? Yes, that's better. Okay, thank you. Right, I won't start from the beginning, I'll carry on. I'd like to welcome everyone to the meeting today. We're all, we're all attending remotely. As well as members of the committee, we've also got members who are not members of the committee and officers joining us to assist us with the discussions. For the ones who are watching the live stream, there is an asterisk by the names of all the members of the IPA committee. The meeting will be live streamed and will be available to watch after the meeting. If the live stream fails, the meeting will continue and a recording will be available through the council's websites following the conclusion of the meeting. Can I remind members that translation facilities are available and to choose your language of choice. If you wish to speak, please use the raise hand function. You can also use the chat facility, but please note that I may not be able to monitor the chat facility during the meeting. All microphones will be muted. If you have indicated your intention to speak, you will be invited to turn your microphone on. If you leave your device for any reason, can you please ensure that you are muted and that you turn your video off? Right, okay, we'll move on to the agenda. Apologies for absence. Yes, councillors Joan Vaughan, Peter Lewis, Harry Savile, and Evel Lloyd. Thank you very much. Anybody else? No? Okay. Declaration of interest. Any declarations? Yes. Councillor Jeff Corey. Yes, um, the forward work programme, page 54, and the combined forward work programme, page 83. Item on each one is uh, tear prints, disposal tear prints. Um, need to declare an interest in that, please. And could you arrange for me to have a declaration of interest form to complete, please, Jane? Thank you. Young Jane. Okay, yes, we'll do. Um, sorry, Councillor Corrie, can I just confirm? It? So it's the discussion on the tier. No, no, it's the forward work programme and the Combined for the web program, page 54 and page 83. I don't think we're discussing it, but it's there, and I just wish to declare right. okay. an interest. But I need to fill the form in, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Right, item three, uh, material and bridge. Right, item three, urgent items. There are no urgent items, Chair. Thank you. Right, minutes of the previous meeting. First of all, approve the meeting a minutes held in the last meeting have we got a proposal and a second please well, they are correct councillor aaron Wynn and councillor brian cossey so the 15th of february minutes can you please show your hands if you agree that they are correct the 15th of february minutes 
Okay, there's a majority there. Thank you very much. The next one is item 4B, approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 1st of March 2021. Have we got a proposal and a seconder, please? Councillor Phil Capper and Councillor Nigel Smith, thank you. Can you show your hands, please, to show that you are in agreement? Thank you. That has been accepted. Item 5, minutes of the informal meeting of overview and scrutiny committee chairs and vice chairs. 5A, approve the meeting held on the 5th of March 2021. Have we got a proposer? Brian, are you willing, please, to propose? Thank you. And Nigel, seconder. Thank you all. Everyone happy with that, please? Everybody happy? Show your hands. Thank you. Right. Right, 5B, to approve the minutes of the informal meeting held on the 12th of April 2022. Have we got a proposal and a second there, please? Councillor Nigel, thank you. Councillor Davies, thank you. Can you raise your hands, please, to show that you are happy? Okay, there we go. Right. Um, item 6, minutes of the Conway Opportunities Board to notes. Um, have we got a proposal and a seconder, please? Thank you, Nigel Smith, and thank you, Councillor David Rees. Can you please show your hand that, to show that you're happy? Thank you. Right. Uh, At number seven, seven questions to cabinet members. There are no questions, Chair. Thank you. Item eight, review the forward work programmes. I think Dawn Hills will take this item. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Chair. So for the purpose of the recording and live streaming, I'm Dawn Hughes, the Scrutiny and Committee Services Officer in Conway. Uh, the, the Finance and Resources Forward Plan is on pages 45 to 66 of your agenda pack. Um, whilst there aren't any changes to the Finance and Resources Forward Plan since I last advised you on the 21st of April, I have had a request to extend the work of the review of the Education Funding Task and Finish Group to January 2022 in order for further meetings to be held during September, October and November. I don't know whether Councillor James or Peter Lewis are here, the chair and vice chair, but we've had that request, so I'd like you to consider that, if you may, members, please. Thank you. I, th I think Councillor Anne has had her hand up. Yes, yeah. Councillor Anne. Yeah, sorry about that, Chair. I, my uh, laptop's been rebuilt last week, and this is the first Zoom meeting I've been on, so the hand function's not working, so you'll okay. have to bear with me today. Sorry about right. that. Um, just a couple of things, Dawn. We were talking about making sure that we had all the programme boards and project boards up to date. Are we, are we still, is that still work in progress? Yes, I, I have got a list, Councillor Anne. I've just checking the membership. The membership's... Um, not quite right on some of them I didn't think so I'm just checking with Emma and hopefully for the next finance and resources one in whenever the next meeting is June that will be up to date so right. okay thanks very much okay John. thank you yeah sorry we not okay yeah do you want to continue Dawn or is that it no that's my that's my update chair oh, thank lovely. you short and sweet and to the point I <laughs> own uh, right, uh, right uh, next item then, item nine. Can you approve the forward plans for me? Very sorry, I apologise. It's, it's, it's been quite a while since I've done this. It's been over a month now. So, um, right, are we, is there anybody uh, willing to make a proposal? Nigel, thank you. Aaron, seconded. A show of hands, please. 
Yeah, hello. Thank you. Uh, can I also ask that as, as the approve, are they happy to approve the extension to the review of education funding task and finish group as well? Right. Have I a proposer that we are happy? Yes, Brian Cossey and Phil Capper. Uh, can I have a show of hands from everybody else, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Don. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, now, item nine. The Conway County Borough Council Customer Service position and Sarah Eckup will present this report. Good morning, Sarah. Is she with us? Is there any Jane? Are you who's presenting this, I, please? I, I can present in Sarah's absence. Oh. Okay. Um, hi. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Andrew Saunders. Um, we had a, a request that came through um, previously regarding the feedback, really, in terms of where um, where we've been with regards to customer services during this during this period through pa the pandemic. Um, what we've done is we've put a report together. Um, hopefully, you've all been able to see through that, really. And it came via um, came through to myself, which took to the service renewal group. And um, the service renewal group, um, as you may be aware, is um, a group that was formed. Um, during the pandemic period, which is made up of all customer service representatives um, within Conway. So the, the ideal place really was to take that back and to get each of those service areas to sort of um, collect their feedback really in terms of what's been taking place. Um, what we've got there in terms of the, the sort of key points really is um, obviously there's been extensive um, movements in terms of the, our digital inclusion um, through this period as our sort of primary means of contact, but also um, we've been able to sort of maintain the service um, throughout, primarily through the, a lot of the good work that was done through the modernization program to make sure that we had no real drop in customer service during that period of the pandemic. Um, what we're looking for really following this as well is to take this, um, is to continue this work um, that's taking place with the service renewal group. Um, so we are put, we have a customer's work stream now within the WorkWise 2020. And from that, we will be setting up a, in the absence of a um, customer service department as such, we will be looking to use that service renewal group then going forward to be the sort of sharing of best practice across our different, our, our, all our services um, and pulling together that sort of um, the, the improvements and constant sort of um, assessment really of how we're delivering to the public and ensuring that we continue our standards uh, throughout. Has anybody got any questions based on that report at all? No, all done now, Vicky. Okay. Um, I've got no hands up. Uh, Councillor Anne, do you want to ask a question? Seeing as no. you've got no facility. No, I've just discovered I had my friend Nigel's just told me that we've changed the system. So I now know how to do it. Thanks, Nigel, for that. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorted now. Thank you. All right. Um, thank, thank, thank you. Yeah, it's a, co it's a comment, really, Andrew. And perhaps, you know, for the, for the rest of the committee, perhaps as sort of an additional recommendation for me. Um, I mean, most of, I think, what's in the report is all good stuff. Um, and I think most of it, I think, I've, I've heard and seen before in different reports and so on. So all good. Um, and certainly I would move um, the um, first two recommendations. Um, recommendation two, however, I think is about really b delivering best practice. I think Andrew called it, but it's about driving being better at what we do now um, and how we do it. But I think within this service renewal program, um, I'd like us to think in terms of th this area that we forward plan and strategically too. Um, so the third recommendation that I would actually like to propose and a bit, a bit of context to it. Those of us who have been on this committee for some time will know that in April 2018, we had our communications and engagement strategy, which obviously underpins a lot of this report. And the golden thread that actually underpinned that was that in times of constraining budgets, we need to transition from our delivery model um, to delivery enabling model. And part of that was about changing the relationship with residents and it was called from customer to citizen. So I would like to propose that we add a, a, another stream to this renewal programme under this customer heading. And that 
I'd say I'd call it customers enabling work stream um, with a focus on how we transition from our current service delivery model to a model which includes co-production and enabling others. Um, so I, I just leave it there. Okay, thank you. Sorry, um, I was on mute. Osna um, Elid is a second. I'll say a seconder. Councillor Andrew, which Andrew Hinchcliffe or Andrew Hinchcliffe? Andrew, are you happy to second it, Andrew? Because I can't see him. I see. Sorry. Yes, I am. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So, uh, J Jane, what do, uh, do we? Are there any other comments? No. Yeah, so we'll... Uh, Councillor Sam, I think, would like to come in. Yes, Councillor Sam. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman, and thank you for your words at the start of this, this meeting. Um, just the the um, proposal from, from Councillor Ander, I uh, just think we already do um, a lot of what um, is, is being uh, suggested in that proposal, um, so just not, what, what, not sure what additional um, work would be expected or uh, needed in terms of you know, co-production, we, we do a huge amount with, with town and community councils, do a huge amount of engagement uh, with, with the public. Um, so just as a term of proposal goes, I'm just not sure what what uh, else it will add to what it is we currently do. Uh, thanks, Joe. Thank you. Anne, do you want to come back? Yeah, I mean, I think Sam is right. I think there's about half a dozen out of the 33 town and community councils that we, that we hold a forum with. But... If we think about what's happened during COVID and, and continues today, the communities actually stood up um, and devised different ways of delivering service for our communities. And that really significantly, first of all, took the strain off this council who didn't, doesn't have the resources to be able to do the sort of stuff that was delivered locally by local people for other people. Um, and very much, I mean, this, this is a, a UK wide theme that's happening in lots of councils. It's happening probably more so I would suggest in, in England than it probably is here, um, but it, it's not a, an England versus Wales or versus Scotland issue. It's a bit about how do you do more um, for less, with less, because we know that we're struggling with our with our finances. So this this is about you know working very much with with communities so that um, we 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 have services delivered that perhaps take some of our service delivery what we think. They want actually takes that out and has it delivered in another way so it is about efficiency it is about productivity and it's about improving outcomes and um, with less money for our residents um, and I think there's a willingness out there which is why all these community groups have been set up to deliver service for others um, and very much it's a win-win really because you know there's very little um, resource needed for within Conway except for facilitating people and giving people signposting, guidance, whatever. And I suppose communities really are, don't seem to be figuring much in lots of our reports or sort of description of services. So this is about let's let's actually take it on board and play with it and really look at and, and let's research what's happening elsewhere to see how this can actually add, add, add capacity into what we are struggling with. Uh, um, Sam, do you have another comment? Um, I, I, I certainly wouldn't agree that there's half a dozen town and community councils that we engage with. We, we open and invite all town and community councils to in those discussions. So just, I think that's uh, oh, yeah. uh, not true uh, as in terms of a statement. Um, and then just uh, heard, heard lots of words, Mr. Chairman, just not sure what practically m much of it means. Uh, we are elected members to this council to represent those people in our community. And we do that very well. We also carry out huge amounts of engagement already. I think practically what, what is expected to, to happen in addition to what we already do. And you know, COVID was mentioned and, and wasn't that an, hasn't the pandemic been an amazing example of how we engage with our communities? 
through things like the um, community support that we put in place, you know, thousands and thousands of residents supported through that process with food deliveries, with pharmaceutical deliveries. And um, what's an, an amazing example of engagement with our community and that, that we carry out when, when we need to and, 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 and um, when it's best for our residents as well. Um, so I just, I just don't understand what is being proposed here uh, and, what, and how it will benefit our, our residents. Okay, thank you, Sam. Um, before, do you want to come back, Anne, before I ask uh, Jane Richardson, because I can see Jane yeah, Richardson. I mean, obviously, I, I put this to the scrutiny committee um, yeah. in, in sort of good faith, really, and with okay. a view to building upon the the um, strategy that Jane put together um, with her team and published in 2018. So the words and the philosophies and the under, under, underlying principles are within our own strategy. And it's about looking forward. I mean, Jane in the report in the strategy talks about looking forward to the next 10 years. So it's about lifting our heads really and horizon scanning. Um, so that we look at how do we do things differently um, and, and how do we just optimise outcomes for the people that we're here to serve. And perhaps Jane uh, would like to, to comment, but I'd also like to hear from my fellow scrutiny members, really. OK, Jane. What are that? Jane, you're on mute. Oh, Bonada, sorry. Um, for the sake of those watching, my name is Jane Richardson. I'm the Director of um, Economy and Place within the Council. Um, just two points, really. I think um, one observation to share is that our engagement with town and community councils was completely transformed, I'd suggest, during the past 12 months through the pandemic. Um, the forum that Councillor Anne mentioned um, still exists, um, but it is not our main method of communication with the town and community councils now. It's a sort of briefing channel where we look at macro themes, you know, uh, themes that might be touching the whole of the county. We we've talked about everything from budgets to Ash Dye back there, but that's not where we're really engaging on a one-to-one -one basis with communities. What's happened during the last 12 months is that we've started having much stronger relationships with the individual town and community councils um, through the work of our, our community officer, Harve Jones, and, and the wider team working around her. Um, and as a result of that, we, we, we've got a much better understanding now of individual community needs and where communities are, are keen and eager to take on services. So, for example, even the last um, 12 months, with everything that's been going on, to councils have come forward to say they want to take on the management of their toilets in the, in the community, which previously those conversations were, were quite difficult, were taking quite a long time. So I think this much more tailored approach working with the town and community councils is working really well. And coming off the back of that, there's this new opportunity, um, through, which is through the Community Renewal Fund, which is one of the streams of UK funding announced some months ago, which is going to be the precursor to the Shared Prosperity Fund, which replaces WEFO funding, the EU funding post-Brexit. Um, and we're therefore having conversations with communities around the county who are developing bids for what they see as the needs for their local area. And they're, they're going to use this community renewal funding for feasibility studies and, and similar pieces of work to be able to develop projects for their local communities. So um, I, 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 certainly I've seen a real escalation in that community focus in the last few months. And I feel that it's, it's being done in a really kind of... Um, tailored fit for purpose way, um, depending on the size and nature of the different communities. You're on mute, Mr. Chairman. Sorry, uh, Jane. Um, I've got Councillor Gronwy Edwards and then Councillor Andrew Hinchcliffe. What are you doing, yeah, uh, good, uh, um, Thank you for letting me speak. Uh, I'm not on your committee, obviously. But certainly uh, the points that Anne raised uh, are, are very relevant to the way forward. But I am no, I sit on, as you know, I sit on the council as well, on a parish council, and I also uh, attend the, the other council in my area. Uh, and apart from that, I sit on an awful lot of bodies in my ward, you know, over the years, ended up being on various community groups. Uh, the only issue I have, the concern I have when we say we uh, hand services over to community groups is the actual resources to do that, because they need, obviously, the capacity and 
they, they need the help in enabling them to take over some of our services. Now, I, a number of the services that come before the town council and before my community councils, whilst they may be keen to do it, when it actually comes down to stepping up and taking on that onerous task, they very often find it, well, the, the, there's the insurance issues, there's the public liability issues, which very often means that they then decide, well, perhaps we're better off leaving this to the, the larger authority to, to manage that for us. But I think there's a real scope through CVSC to help community groups. Um, and I go back to many years ago when we had about, I think we had about, we reviewed the partnerships we had with, with groups. And we had somewhere in the region of 350 partnerships, which took an awful lot of office at time to service all these different partnerships. So it is important that we look at how we can maximise the limited resources that come from central government or from the West, uh, from Cardiff to ensure that we don't stretch ourselves too thinly uh, and then services are left um, uh, in unsecure positions, for the want of a better word. That's all. My, that's my only comment. Diolch y fawr, uh, uh, Councillor Andrew Hinchcliffe. You're on mute, thank, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I couldn't get the cursor on the right bit. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, all I was going to do in support of Anne, which is why I supported her, is all of our communities have done different things to help their community and volunteers have done different things. And I, I my take on it is that perhaps we should do an audit of what actually has been going on and, and, and demonstrate best practice and see where we can liaise with them. Uh, different communities have done things completely differently. Yes, centrally we provided prescriptions, but locally groups provided them here and locally in uh, MMR, for instance, they were making meals for people. I'm not saying that we want to do it ourselves, but it'd be nice to know what's out there. And I think that was the line that Councillor Anne was, was going on. Uh, Councillor Andrew, Councillor Philip Kapper. What a da, Philip. What a da, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit puzzled by what I'm saying in that it seems to me it's what we do already. Um, and, you know, it's, engagement is an evolving thing and, and we, we evolve as we go along, obviously. So I'm sort of um, in line with Sam's thinking on this. What is it exactly extra we want to do that we don't already do? That's my question. Thank you. Diolch, uh, Councillor Philip. Councillor Anne, do you want to come back? Yeah, I mean, there isn't a specific answer to this. This is about if we, if we genuinely believe in continuous improvement and actually learning from experience of others, we lift our heads and we look around and we, you know, part of what Andrew's saying is we do it locally, but maybe we do it even wider than that in terms of just how enabling communities actually de delivers um, a, a lot of service at a lower cost um, and at, therefore within the sort of budget. So the outcomes when for citizens, when resources are finite and actually not sufficient, um, we're actually, you know, continue to look at doing things differently. So I would have thought within a renewal programme, this would be an exciting part of the research that we do and the learning that we do to see how we can actually use the resources that are out there. Because whilst, you know, I don't minimise what you're doing with town and community councils, it's not about, you know, bureaucracy structures. It isn't town and community councils that are always the out there in the communities delivering all this sort of stuff. It's about other groups and there's loads of them. You know, Andrew suggests putting, a, putting together, you know, a and actually trying to understand what's happening and where, where you take the learning. So very much it's about taking a strategic approach to how we get better outcomes for our communities, but with them. Uh, Councillor Ronnie Hughes. What are there, Ronnie? Good morning, Chair. The concept that we've been discussing this morning is good, but I do question the timing. The amount of pressure that's been put on the communities they're all waiting for the curtains to open in the next few weeks. We've got to give the communities and our workers time to get back to a normal life. Trying to go through this and putting work on them now, I think is absolutely ridiculous. Go later on in the year, give a chance to the, for the communities and everybody to recover. 
Yeah, Diolch yn fawr Right, I've got nobody else. So can I ask Councillor Anne to restate her proposal, please? And then we'll take it to the vote. Yeah, um, I'd like to propose that we add a communities enabling work stream to the renewal programme to focus on how we can transition from our current service delivery model to a model that includes more co-production and, and enabling of others. And Councillor Andrew, you are happy to second that? Thank you. Yeah, uh, now Ruan of any. Uh, I will now ask Jane Ahara Jones to call your name so that you can vote. Thank you. Jane. Okay, thank you, Councillor Austin. So, members, are you clear what you're voting on here on Councillor Anne's? Proposal. Okay, Councillor Philip Capper. Abstain. Councillor Jeff Corey. Abstain. Councillor Brian Cossey. Councillor Brian, are you there? Oh. Councillor Pauline Heap Williams. Um, abstain. Councillor Andrew Hinchcliffe? Four. Oh. Councillor Chris Hughes? Four. Oh. Councillor Wynne Ellis Jones? Oblied. Councillor Anne McCaffrey? Four. Oh. Councillor Dave Rees? Abstain. Councillor Austin Roberts? Matal. Councillor Nigel Smith. That's all. Councillor Andrew Wood. Councillor Andrew Wood, are you there? No, I think I'm, we've lost Councillor Andrew and Councillor Aaron Wynn. I'm blind. Thank you, members. Members, if my scores are right, it's five in favour and seven abstentions. Yeah, does that mean it's passed? Oh, there we are, but I got an high here, but... Uh, I can affirm uh, that uh, Councillor Anne McCaffrey's proposal has been passed. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We'll go on to the next item. Chair, do you want to make sure that the other items are, um, did you vote on all the um, recommendations there, just so that we're clear, or was that just Councillor Anne's? No, I, I, I think, I think uh, if I'm right, and I'm sure Councillor Anne will correct me, the proposal was to accept, to accept all of them and to add what she oh, put fine. on at the end. That's just to confirm. Thank you. Mr. Yeah, German. Austin, Austin, you're right. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I think also I counted up, I think that there were six, six in favor. Yeah. Um, I'll ask I'll ask uh, Jane to check. Yeah. Okay. Uh Philip. Yes, you want uh, to thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I mean my abstention was purely on Anne's uh, proposal, which which I wasn't against as such, but I think we should have the opportunity to accept the other. Okay. Uh, proposals as well. All right. We'll we'll do that with a show of hands then. Okay. Yeah. So is everybody happy with that? Show of hands. What? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to roll call? Yeah, okay. Um right. Uh, I've just been informed it's better that we have a roll call. Okay. So um Jane will call out your names. Thank you, members. Councillor Phil Capper. Oh. Councillor Jeff Corey. Oh. Councillor Brian Cossey. As far as I'm concerned, Mr. Chairman, I voted for the three recommendations last time, so I vote in favour. Okay. Councillor Pauline Heap Williams. Oh. Councillor Andrew Hinchcliffe. Oh. Councillor Chris Hughes. Councillor Chris. Four. 
Councillor Wynne Ellis Jones. Applied. Councillor Anne McCaffrey. I just confirm what Brian said. We've already voted on this, um, but you know, for the record, I'll vote again for it. Thank you, Councillor Anne. Councillor Dave Rees. Oh. Councillor Austin Roberts. Oblite. Councillor Nigel Smith. Oblite. Councillor Andrew Wood. Are you there this time? No, I've lost him. Councillor Aaron Wynne. Oblite. Thank you, members. That's 12 in favour. Okay, we try get an high button there with the pressure. If everybody's happy, we'll go on to the next item. Item number 10. Work Well Schemes Evaluation Report 2020 2021. And uh, representing this will be Nia Lloyd Lewis. Good morning, Nia. Good morning. I'm not sure if Shane wants to say something first. Shane, would you like to come in? Yes. I won't steal uh, Nia's limelight here. But just want to thank for the opportunity for having to uh, speak today. I think it's very important. And this report does show where we have reached uh, regarding developments over the last year. The first report regarding uh, the evaluation of work wealth scheme. As you can see in the report, a lot has been happening. A lot of things have happened in a really difficult time for the team, but I think we should use this uh, opportunity to thank them for uh, uh, providing this service in a very difficult time. But also, I think we should look at part three of the report, which uh, speak about the award the service has won over the last month, which is MENA, who's won the Tutor of the Year. And the Council has came third as the Employee of the Year in Wales. And I think that's a, a very good achievement for the, for the service. And I'd like to thank Nia and the team for their work and the support to reach these standards. And so I'm going to leave that to Nia, as it's her that has actually uh, prepared this report. So I'm sure Nia will take over from here. You can try again, Nia. Thank you very much. As you know, we have been very lucky uh, to have the enormous investment to have a, t a Welsh language tutor here in the council. And it's been a plan that has been uh, finance so that uh, MENA can work with us. As Shane said, the past year has been very different and very difficult, but we have also had many achievements. The lessons have been online for a year now. But as well as the achievements of the learners, we're also very proud of the uh, Speaking Welsh uh, scheme, which is where the learners are paired with a, a fluent Welsh speaker. I'm one of them. And it has been very beneficial for the learners. We just have a chat for half an hour every week, and I think it's a great opportunity for those learners to practice. And as Shane said, we are delighted that MENA has won this uh, award of Tutor of the Year, and very proud that we, as Conway Council, have has come third in the category of Employer of the Year. And this is due to our commitment to promote the langu Welsh language and teach the Welsh language during this period. We have heard as well about the investments for the uh, current financial year. So the lessons have been able to continue and have been, uh, have been financed. I won't go through the rest of the report any, uh, unless anybody else wants to ask any questions about it. Does, does anybody ha have any questions, please? I'd like to say 
Thank you, Tania. And I'd like you, I'd also like to uh, congratulate you as um, as a, a committee to MENA and obviously to the Council um, for becoming third in this uh, competition. And I'd like to thank you for the report. I can see that and Councillor Andrew Hinchcliffe would like to ask a question. Andrew. I was just going to say, is it available to members as well? Yes. Uh, yep. uh, yes. Right. I, maybe I just missed it, but I thought it'd be something I could do. Yeah, of course. I'll put you in touch with um, Mena, who uh, can advise you further. Mena, unfortunately, couldn't be with us this morning because she's uh, actually teaching a class at the moment. Down. Uh, right. Can you hear the Wynne Jones? Yes, Councillor Wynne Jones. Thank you, Chair. Just to propose a recommendation, just to congratulate Mena and the team for their success. And lots of positive messages have been received about Mena and the work. So, just congratulations as well. Thank you very much. Any Councillor Nigel Smith? Unmute yourself, Nigel. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you, right. Um So, yeah, uh, you know, can I just say that a few years ago, to my surprise, I sat on a, on a small uh, group which is improving the Welsh language at, uh, at Conway. And as a non-Welsh speaker, I couldn't understand why I was there. But I was there for a, for a reason. And obviously, as a non-Welsh speaker, I had the best input that I could. But it was quite surprising to me that the, the biggest problem was... Um, that people didn't have the confidence to speak in Welsh. They lacked the confidence. And I, I think since then, great strides, strides have been made in improving the confidence. And I see a lot more uh, people wearing the lanyards, that they speak Welsh and using, using the language, which is a great thing. Uh, I, I fully support this, but, but I'm mindful of the fact of you know, the, the pressures on our officers. And, uh, you know, you Anne commented uh, only a few weeks ago that, you know, some officers were at, were at breaking point. And I'm concerned about the additional pressures to, uh, to take up these lessons. Now, I've just heard the young lady giving us a talk about how the lessons are 30 minutes. But in the report on page 120, it says the lessons are two times three hours. And I'm, I'm just concerned that we're, we're piling on an additional pressure on our already stretched officers. And whilst I fully support it, I just want us all to be mindful of that, that, you know, the, this should be voluntary and, and no pressure should be put on these staff. If, if, they, if they want to do it, that's great. And I fully support it. But, you know, our officers' time and pressure I'm very concerned about, and I just just wanted to highlight that. Yeah, hello, Nigel. Uh, Nia, do you have an all? Nia, do you want to come back? Um, just to confirm, they are totally voluntary, unless there is a condition in their contract that says that they have to learn Welsh. Otherwise, it's the staff's choice to go on all these courses. And the 50 staff this year have chosen to go on these courses. Also, just to confirm, the lessons are three hours online once a week. The 30 minutes I talked about was the scheme with the buddy up system, where the learner and the fluent Welsh speaker speaks once a week, not the actual lesson. Thank you. Have you received sufficient clarification, Nigel? Yeah, I just, you know, I, do, I don't want anybody to, because I, I know our officers are really busy and I just think, yeah. you know, I just don't want to put any more pressure on well, them. No, we, we're and, not doing, and, we're and not also, doing that. It's voluntary. Yeah, that, that's great. That's okay. Great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, Councillor Chris Keater. Uh, Austin. Uh, yeah, I think the feedback questionnaire is very interesting here. Um, if you have a look at it, um, 77% strongly agree that they enjoyed the Welsh course and no one was not enjoying it. 41% uh, strongly agree that the course content is relevant to their job. I mean, this is a work Welsh programme, so 
you know, it, it's not so much about um, uh, Sid Madtawid and, and, and all that sort of thing. It, it is relevant to people's job. Um, and then, you know, 100% said they would be continuing with the course next year. So I, I think I need to blow the tr Mena's trumpet and, and Nia and Elena's trumpets here because it is really relevant to our workforce. Uh, and I think it's uh, Puisig Yaum. Thanks. Uh, Thank you very much, Councillor Chris Ketzer, and I agree with you every word. We need to praise. I think this is a very encouraging report. And also, just to make a point, there is a section in one of the reports where it mentions how encouraging it is to see that there are more councillors non-Welsh speaking councillors using the Welsh language when it comes to voting. And councillor Nigel Smith is a good example of this. I noticed, I think it started in the planning meetings and councillor Nigel Smith was the councillor that started the trend, if you like. So he is to be congratulated for doing that. And every one of you is to be congratulated. And it's everyone's language, of course. If we Welsh speakers or not, it's everyone's language. And also I agree with the point that there are a number of people who want to learn, and it's a lock of confidence. It's up to us that who are Welsh speakers to support these people and to assist them to improve their Welsh. So I do approve this report. Right, nobody else. Councillor Wynne Jones has proposed that we approve this report. So can I ask for a second, please, for Councillor Wynne Jones? Councillor Andrew Hinchcliffe, thank you. Great. Uh, can I ask you to show a hand if you all agree? Put your hands up if you, have, if you agree. Please show hands. Thank you. That has been passed. Right. The next item, please, Nia. Um, so the reports on the Welsh language standards you see that one of the developments, most exciting developments during the last year is to appoint Elinette to the Welsh Promotion and Development Officer post. Since she started with us in January, she's been very busy doing all sorts of different developments. So before I go any further, so about the rest of the reports, I'd like to pass you on to Elinette to talk about the work she's been doing. Thank you. Thank you, Nia. Um, good morning, Elinette. Thank you, Nia. As Nia mentioned, I started as a promotion and development officer back in January. So I'll just give you a short summary of what I've been doing over the last few months. So first of all, back in February, we had the Welsh Music Day. So I created a playlist for all the primary schools in the county of Welsh language songs. And we created a QR code to put on a poster and send that out on an email to all the schools. And then the teachers or the parents just needed to scan that QR code and it took them straight to the playlist of Welsh songs. And we had really good feedback from the schools, the Welsh medium and English medium schools on this plan, on the scheme. And we, they were very happy that we, it was successful. But what we then felt, so it was excellent to celebrate the language and Welsh music on the day, but what about the rest of the year? So we thought about creating the next project, which is the band of the month. So at the beginning of every month, we then send a poster out to the primary schools, the Welsh and English schools, with the name of the Welsh band on the poster and a list of their 
songs to share with the classroom for the children to listen and enjoy the music throughout the year. And after the Band of the Month and the Welsh Music Day, another thing we did was to celebrate St David's Day in March, was to have an art and craft competition. So we worked with the schools once again. So it was a competition where they had to create a piece of art, 2 or 3D, so to be in line with the St David's Day theme. And we had children from 16 different schools taking part. And this was half and half, so eight from Welsh schools and eight from English medium schools. So it's nice to have that balance. And also, the competition was shared, obviously, on email with the schools. It's also shared on the official social media pages and also by the partners that we're working with, such as Mentoriaith Conway and Ir Conway. So, all those associations. So, lastly, I'll say competition for the Welsh learners internally in the council. So, for the staff who work for the council at the moment, we're on the Learning Welsh scheme. So, we had a competition for them to celebrate St David's Day as well. It was a photography competition. So, what they needed to do was take a picture of their local area then write a hundred words to be in line with that picture in Welsh, obviously. And that was a very positive thing as well. And we had a lot of positive feedback from Mena on that. And that's all I got, really. Just a very short summary. And I'll pass you back on now to Mia. Yeah, to the rest of the work that happened during the year. And you all know, of course, we established the new group, which is the Welsh Language Steering Board, back in March. It has been a really good development. So we've had two meetings up to now, and there are very exciting things coming out of that group. So I have to apologise for a mistake in the English version in 3.1c. It was a test, really, to see if you've been reading the report, of course. But unfortunately, in 3.1c, it talks about Welsh language officer doing the interview on Radio Cymru. Of course, it should be the Welsh learner, not the Welsh officer. I can't name anybody apart from myself because I translated the report. But of course, we are very proud of the learner who did that interview on Radio Cymru. You will see that the translation work has gone from strength to strength. And since July, we have translated over 100,000 words a month, which is a huge figure. It's about 200,000 a month more than we've been doing up to now. And in March, we reached over 1.2 million with more simultaneous translation and more hours spent proofreading as well. So that's good news, of course, that so many people are using the service. Obviously, we've talked about the successes of the Work Welsh, or work, work Welsh scheme. Council Austin has mentioned about the simultaneous translation and we are really happy that the councillors have started to vote in Welsh and use more of their Welsh language skills during the last year. So that's a good development as well. In terms of looking forward to the future, we'll be going on now to develop the promotion strategy further, as is required under the standards. Ellen has talked about the developments in terms of the Welsh Music Day and carrying on with that with the band of the month. And also the Welsh lessons. A new course has started last week, which is the combined course. So majority of the learning is online with that. That is no tutor. The learning itself is done online. Then we'll be contact with the tutor every three weeks. And of course, written tasks in the middle. 
So we're looking forward to see how that will develop over the next year as well. So if you've got any other questions to raise about this report, I'll be ready to answer them. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Nia. I see that's Councillor Ronnie Hughes wants to ask his question. Ronnie? Well, it's, it's not just to ask a question, it's a comment, really, Jay. Yeah, OK. You know, going back, um, I'm looking now and seeing Gromway and Brian. He knows when we started off the Welsh language years ago, it was difficult, and Conway started on the back foot. But it was one of the main players in delivering the Welsh language. And they, it, it didn't go smoothly, but it has worked very well, and we've got an absolutely brilliant translation unit in Conway. Always have done, they've done the work and everything. My concern is over the last six, 18 months, one of the mainstays of the Welsh language from the schools is the Earth. No doubt about it. You know, the Earth's gone for 18 months. How are we going to, I know Wynne's there because he, uh, he sits on the committee. When are we going to start forming the Earth again? And my question to Elena is, when you do go to the other Stedford, you will see the participants from Conway winning medals galore from the primary schools. But it ceases with the secondary schools. Mm. There doesn't seem to be that emphasis on the earth with taking the language through on the, second, uh, on the secondary schools. Can we get over this hurdle? And we've got to bring the kids back from the primary schools as quickly as possible. I know there are restrictions, but there's a lot of children who have missed out. And can I just say, as I've done the course with Mike Priestley, is absolutely brilliant. And can I also say, my, grand, my two grandchildren have won gold medals in the eighth. So, it, you know, it is, you need to push the eighth a lot more, but I do have this fear that we lose the language in secondary education. Uh, diolch, Ronnie. Um, Thank you, Ronnie. Elena, would you like to uh, make a comment on what Councillor Ronnie has said? I definitely agree that we need to invest more time into secondary schools. I'm obviously new since January, starting with primary schools. But as the situation with COVID does improve, we will be able to go back to schools. And I definitely will visit these secondary schools. And also as someone who has been working for the Erd, I know how much work they do and we do work closely. I do uh, contact uh, Elling, who is the Erd contact officer in Conway, and we will be working together more like this um, as the um, COVID restrictions do improve. Thank you, Elin Ed. Councillor Andrew Hinchcliffe. I was just going to say that our town council in Llanfavechan pays for every child's membership of the earth because we didn't want the people who might have been otherwise excluded uh, from taking part. So we pay for every child to earth subscription in Llanfavechan. Diane Andrew, and that is very commendable, if I might say so. Yawn, <clears throat> okay, Osar, oh, oh, bring all the King Harry Wynne Jones. Councillor Wynne. Late as usual. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to add to what Ronnie was saying, I do agree with everything that he has said. I'm nothing formal to do with it, but I do support them, as most of us do. There is a good question regarding what the effect of the pandemic has been on young people. There are children in this county who only had the Welsh language through the schools, and obviously the schools were closed. Um, they did miss this opportunity to speak Welsh, and it has been ha very much affected. I do want to commend this report before saying that it is an internal report, and the work that we do as a council, and I'm very proud, and I, I do praise the work. But as a council, there's so much more we can do without, uh, outside of the authority. We as councillors and governors can move uh, schools. There's a lot of work to do with 
the schools that do op offer the Welsh language, but we can do more to help this. Sorry, I can't hear you. Um, we're losing you, Wynne. Can you hear me now? I will uh, turn my camera off and see if it improves. There's a lot we can do as councils and councillors and governors to move schools forward in the in the uh, language continuum. I'm not sure if we will have a report to the Education Scrutiny Committee regarding the effect of the pandemic on the Welsh language uh, in, with regards to young people, because they have missed the opportunity to practice their Welsh, um, especially those who only speak Welsh in school. Maybe we could look into the effect of that. So just to summarise, I am very supportive of this report and I congratulate everyone. But as the, as, the, as the Council, we can do so much more outside of the authority to promote the Welsh language. Thank you, Win. Nia? Just to add to that, Elinad and myself have been working closely with the education officers over the past few months. And one of the things Lynyrd and I will be doing when we're allowed to go out to speak to the public and to schools again is work closely with primary schools as well as secondary schools in the county just to develop things further. At the moment, we can't do that, but I'm sure it will be over the next year. So we are really looking forward to be able to making further developments over the next year. Thank you. Rhianab uh, Gareth. Rhianab Gareth. Thank you, Chair. Just to add, I think we all agree that this is a journey. We do praise what has happened, but there are further steps that we can take and the steps that Lynnette have has taken in such a short period of time has, has proven very successful but it's very important that we do work on what we have achieved so far. And there is a lot more work to do, as Elena Dania said, with working uh, with education. And I think this will be more of a priority as we come out of this very difficult period over the past 12 or more months. So I do agree there's more work to be done, um, but the report does conform with the Welsh standards, but these aren't just words on paper. We are actually acting on what we are doing, and it is very important that we keep on doing this within and outside of the council. Thank you. I don't know if you've seen the message from Dawn, but if you do go on the chat facility, there is an, a message from Dawn Hughes one of the Democratic Services Officers, saying that there is a report. Uh, go, okay, I don't have anybody else with their hands up. So I know that Councillor Wynne has made a proposal. Do we have a seconder to this proposal? Thank you, Councillor Anne McCaffrey. And I'm now going to ask Jane to do the roll call. Thank you. Okay, thank you, members. Councillor Philip Kappa. Uh, in the spirit of the morning, oblige. <laughs> Four. Councillor Jeff Corrie. Oblige. Four. Councillor Brian Cossey. Four. Councillor Pauline Heap Williams. Oblige. Four. Councillor Andrew Hinchcliffe. Oblige. Four. Councillor Chris Hughes. Oblige. Four. Councillor Wynne Ellis Jones. Oblige. Four. Councillor Anne McCaffrey. Oblige. Four. Councillor Dave Rees. Oblige. Four. Councillor Austin Roberts. Oblige. Four. Councillor Nigel Smith. Oblige. Four. Councillor Andrew Wood. Not here. Councillor Aaron Wynne. 
Four. Blind. Four. Thank you, members. That proposal has been carried. Diachenwaur and Bahamberg. Thank you. And Bahamberg to Councillor Brian Cossey. Okay. I'd just like to thank everyone for con their contributions today, especially to Andrew Saunders and Nia Suid Lewis and Elined Meyer Davis and to Mr. Hin Apgareth. I'd also like to thank Jane for helping me today and keeping me on the right track and Dawn and also to Bedwin. And just to add to that, I just like to say on behalf of us, uh, I just like to thank on behalf of all of us to everyone who's helping, who has helped during the election. You did an amazing work and we'd just like to praise you. And we do thank you very much for your work. You do deserve a rest. And I see Iwan nodding his head and I'm sure when he sees you in a pub, when it's safe to do so, he will buy you a drink. I'd also like to